Addiction has plagued mankind since ancient times, and the development of more powerful drugs, along with easy access to addictive substances, has only made the problem worse. Addiction is fully endemic in society, and it would be hard to find a family that is not affected by it. The Bible references Noah's drinking habits and intoxication. The use of opium in Syria in the 7th century BC is well documented in ancient medical texts. And the ancient Incas living in the Andes 3,000 years before Christ chewed coca leaves to counter the physical effect of thin mountain air. The Chinese emperor Shen Nung wrote about cannabis in the year 2727 BC. In this webinar, I will show you how to use acupuncture and nutrition to help people break free from the grip of addiction. Let's take a look at some definitions. Cravings, abuse, dependency, and addiction. Craving. Craving is an intense desire that is difficult to resist. From the Old Norse to demand. Abuse. Drug abuse, also known as drug misuse. It is defined as habitual use to alter one's me's, mood, emotion, or state of consciousness, which results in physical, social, mental, or economic harm to self or others. Now, uh, some person might say, well, I can see how this would hurt the drug user, but how does it hurt other people in society? Is not this a victimless crime? But what about your mother? What about your sisters? What about your friends? What about your employer who you're not giving your 100% to? So drug use quickly turns to harm one way or the other. But in any case, this is the definition of drug abuse. And then it goes to the next stage, dependency. Dependency is an adaptive state that develops from a repeated drug administration. So a person could be abusing drugs, but they haven't abused it yet to become dependent. But as long as they can, so they're still in sort of this voluntary state. But once they begin to abuse drugs, use them to alter their mood, emotion, or state of consciousness to the harm of themselves or others, over time, they become dependent. And the key factor is it results the key factor is an adaptive state that develops from repeated drug administration, which results in withdrawal signs and symptoms upon cessation of drug use. From the Latin, dependere, from D down and pender to hang. And ants, a quality of state. So it's a quality of state of falling or hanging down. So you see, you can easily become dependent on something um, like falling off a cliff or falling off a uh, a chair or falling over something. You fall into it. So um, the important thing is it, it is the existence of the withdrawal signs and symptoms. Now, some people who are interested in making, who are interested in introducing people to better living through mood altering drugs will claim that certain drugs are not addictive well, they're splitting hairs because their drugs absolutely cause dependency, but it may not full the, fulfill the full criteria of addiction. So they're actually offering false solutions uh, to your patients, your friends, your community, um, some false hope. And the ads, you know, for more, I don't have to name the drugs. You see them all the time. They've legalized one drug already, and now they're moving to legalize the others. And of course, it's based upon not goodwill to others, not making a better word, but simply, you know, dollars and cents and billions of dollars are at stake. And then finally, we come to actual addiction. And this is defined as physiological, having to do with the body, or psychological, I think I need it, although my body doesn't demand I need it, dependence characterized by Q. And that Q is compulsion to use a substance, uncontrolled use of the substance, and existence of withdrawal symptoms such as anxiety and irritability. From the Latin ad, meaning towards, to, towards or at, and 
diso or to say, to say or declare. So I declare that I need this. I feel I need it. And it's based upon compulsion to use, uncontrolled consumption, and existence of withdrawal symptoms. So if you take a look at the definition of abuse, and we'll go back there just a minute, um, it's really not that different than addiction. Um, so um, don't be fooled by these things. Don't let someone fool your patients. Uh, both of anyone or any product that causes dependency, that, that promotes abuse, causes dependency, and addiction or forward crazing is really an enemy to your patients and your community. And this is something as holistic practitioners, we need to fight against. It may feel like an overwhelming battle and it often feels that way to me. Um, but I looked for the simplicity and that's what I'm gonna give you in this short 30 minute program. The simplicity that will allow you to move many things. So if you're a medical doctor, if you're gonna handle an opioid addiction, if you're gonna handle uh, uh, a marijuana addiction, if you're going to handle a uh, Prozac addiction, if you're going to handle a pornography addiction, um, if they're all different programs, but because we're holistic practitioners and we deal with the patient, not with the addiction, we can use one program that will almost fit every patient or with just minor adjustments. And that's what you're going to learn in a few minutes. So what are the predisposing factors to addiction? Well, low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, malnutrition, protein deficiencies, pain, which the addictive substance may, may relieve, uh, mental factors, uh, spiritual factors. Uh, these are all things that may that predispose a person to addiction. Loneliness, uh, mental disturbances, anxiety, pain, uh, not eating properly, having low blood sugar. These are all predisposing factors. Then we come to, there are many types of addictions. You have drugs, alcohol, nicotine, pornography, to name a few. There are many uh, factors, neurological, hormonal, social, uh, emotional. There are many theories. It's an emotion, it's a moral defect, it's a disease, it's caused by childhood experiences or exposure to neurotoxins. And there are super treatments. There's the drug superstition, super substitution uh, program where you substitute one drug for another. There's going cold turkey, there's alcoholics and ominous. Beatings are routinely used in certain countries. Torture is often recommended. Um, one way or the other. Incarceration is what we like to do in the US and taking on a healthy lifestyle are all factors uh, of um, treatment for addiction. And um, so with all these factors, with all these different types of addiction, is there one common factor that we can hang our hat on? Is there one thing that we can say for certainty without, about addiction? Is there one thing that can help us understand addiction and help us find a route out? Can we stand on solid ground? Yes. Fortunately, there is one common denominator that sweeps aside all the confusion, and that is reward. If you think about the addict, if you think about your cravings, if you think about um, dependency, why are people doing it? It feels good, of course. I may go eat a loaf of bread in a minute. Why? Because it feels good. It feels better. That's why people do it. The addict isn't bad. They're not morally derelict. Beatings won't help. Uh, drug withdrawal, drugs may or may not help, but they're doing it because it feels good. They know it's bad. They know it's a problem. They want to quit more than you want to, but. It feels too good. You know, I want to share a personal experience and I'm going to get into everything. I may take a few extra minutes. I hope you'll spare me them because this is a big subject. You gave me a big task to do in 30 minutes. I recall after having a painful dental surgery, uh, they gave me some Oxycontins to take. And um, I did take one and I slept great. And when I woke up in the morning, I felt really good. You know, my body, I didn't have any attention on my body. There were no aches and pains. 
Mentally, I felt clear. The world looked bright. You know what the problem was? I felt too good. I could get used to this. That was the realization. It felt too good and I could get used to it. Well, that was the last of OxyContin for me. And so, but I did experience, I did put my toe in the wonder, you know, of the reward of drug abuse. Oh, it feels so good, you know. Okay. So, um, in a few moments, I will share with you the starting place to help someone break free of addiction. It can be very difficult to break free of addiction, and I applaud anyone who is doing so. I see my role as a part of the team, including the person. I'm working with them, not against them. Their support network, and they better have a support network in any professionals that they're working with. When a, a, a person, you know, I don't like to call them a drug addict. That's, I don't know, I, I don't feel good about that, and they don't like hearing it. You know, with the person uh, who has an addiction or who is being had by an addiction comes to me and they want help, I say, well, do you have a support network? Is, your, is somebody in your family supporting you? Do you have a wife or a loved one or a, a brother or a sister or a husband or a boyfriend? Do you have someone who's going to support you? Because this is not a solo task in my experience. They need a support network. You can't do it by yourself. They probably can't do it by themselves. You got to be part of the team. And I don't try to capture the whole thing. I just want to be part of the team and use my component to help him uh, but he's got to, you have to do his mental and his spiritual and his lifestyle changes along with his good environment. So um, I have this video on how to quit quitting smoking, but it's the exact same acupuncture points. It's the exact same nutrition for any addiction. So I've renamed it overcoming addiction. And here we see, because it's acupuncture points, these are the measurements, you know, anterior, posterior, little definitions. What is a soon? How do you find your way around the body? We've already covered this before. It's for your patient. And here are the acupuncture points, only three. And uh, you'll see why in a couple of minutes, and we'll go into depth in them. And then here is the protocol. The remarkable thing about thing of this protocol is it's so small and it's so simple. Look at it. There's only four basic products and three more maybes, also considers, also ran. You know, I looked at most addiction protocols. They were big. Why did I select this one? For a simple reason. From the viewpoint of the practitioner, the word is compliance. And from the viewpoint of the only person that matters, the patient, the word is doability. How doable is it? You say, well, if they want to quit, they're going to have to take these, all these products. Look, sometimes I take 100 products a day, but I'm not a drug addict. I don't have the social pressures, the emotional pressures, the spiritual pressures, the economic pressures that someone who's addicted to drugs have. They can't handle the program that you want to give them, and they probably can't handle the program you're on. We have to start them on solid ground. Maybe it won't take them the whole way, but let's take them one step. Let's show them that there is a way to a better life. And believe me, when they take that step, they'll be ready for the next. Okay, over here is the lifestyle recommendation. Beeler's broth. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. We're going to cover it in depth in a couple of minutes. And then here is your medical advice disclaimer. So um, I have a little... Uh, resource for you. It's also sort of a, an ad. Um, I've created four um, courses uh, for your patients. Uh, each course takes about uh, three to four weeks. It includes um, instructional videos, PDF downloads, quizzes, and real world assignments, as well as 60-day email access to me for questions. Each course uh, costs $199. And I've set it up so that you can receive a 20% commission on any course that your patient buys. And um, if you're interested, so um, if this is something that's interesting to you, uh, let me know and I'll show you how to do it or answer your questions. Here we go. First product is Simplex F or Simplex M. Six a day on an empty stomach. Simplex 
F or M supports the healthy function of the pituitaries, the thyroid, the adrenal glands, and the ovaries of the testicles. So it's great for restoring hormonal balance. We already know that, home, that drugs upset hormonal balance. So this is the fundamental step to help restore hormonal balance. Um, let's take a look at the next product. Super EEF, three twice a day. Supports the central nervous system, helps maintain cellular health, provides support for energy production. Isn't that what the drug addicted person needs? Central nervous system support, peripheral nervous system support, energy production? Absolutely. Used for any condition that stresses the nerves. Enzacor, two with each meal, a complex brand of enzymes, glutamine, and other whole food ingredients designed to support healthy digestion and maximize nutrient absorption. What does an, a, a drug addicted person need? They need to harvest nutrients from the foods they eat. Their digestion is shot. Of course it is. And so we have to build it up. So whatever they're eating, hopefully it's good, but whatever they're eating, let's let them suck the goodness out of it. Plus it has L-glutamine, which is an amino acid, which thickens the lining of the intestines, um, uh, preventing a leaky gut and also uh, helping people feel a little bit happier. Okay, inositol powder. Clinical research indicate, studies indicate that inositol is effective, safe alternative to antidepressant medications particularly SSRIs for the management of and treatment of depression, panic disorders, and obsessive compulsive disorders. And it also stalls efficacy in the, in the absence of side effects, makes this nutrient an attractive addition to treatment plans for specific mood disorders. And that's by the famous Gina Nick, PhD, ND. Um, this was her scientific research study uh, published in uh, peer review journals. For depression and panic, the literature suggests a dose of 12 grams, which is three tablespoons of inositol per day. As little as one to two teaspoons of this miracle substance can be used to promote sleep. Normally, dose is titrated from one tablespoon to three tablespoons a day. If you take it too quickly, the person will develop, may develop loose bowels. So I start with one tablespoon and then build up uh, over the period of a week. Now, Inositol, if you've never tasted it, tastes sweet. And the sweeter it tastes, the more you need it. Okay, also consider uh, Cataplex B Core. It's a nerve tonic, two twice a day. Supports the heart, uh, palpitations, tachycardia. Supports blood, uh, sugar blood, balance, uh, blood sugar balance, uh, low blood sugar. Supports muscle strength, poor muscle tone. Supports mood, depression, and anxiety. So if, any, if, the, if the patient has any of these things, they need a nerve tonic, this is the product. Okay, Livco detoxification, two twice a day, supports liver function. It is the detoxification support product. Antioxidant support, cellular health, or oh, I wrote cellular health twice. That's because it does improve cellular health. <laughs> So if there's any sign of liver damage, if there's any history of um, liver damage, if liver enzymes are high or if liver detoxification is desired, this is your product. Okay, valerian, easy sleep. That's the key word. Two to three, uh, one hour before bed. Repeat as needed during the night for relief of nervous tension, relieves occasional sleepiness, promotes relaxation, ease the temporary a stress, the temporary effects of stress. That's it. That's the protocol. Get them started with this and then have their community help them with whatever program they're going to do. Now, here's the next step. Support the individual. Rest, good food, no harassment, no beatings, no making them wrong. Let them, let them pray. Let them, let them do what they need to do. Let them have some space. Okay, and then Beeler's Broth one to three bowls per day. This is a miracle product they can cook up in their own kitchen, their mother, wife, husband, brother, friend, boyfriend, uh, ex-wife, ex-husband can make it for them. And we'll see that in just a minute. And here is my video on Beeler's Broth. Natural solutions focus on supporting the healing process, helping your body move through the inflammatory cleanup phase and into the cell growth and reorganization rebuilding phases. I am suggesting that rather than attempting to defeat inflammation, 
that natural solutions focus on supporting inflammation and the healing process. If you have any signs of inflammation, redness, heat, pain, swelling, a loss of function, I suggest you try Beeler's broth for two weeks to see how it helps. Beeler's broth can also be eaten exclusively for two or three days to cleanse and reboot your digestive system. I will talk more about detoxifying cleanses in another video. Dr. Henry Beeler was a prominent American physician best known for his book, Food is Your Best Medicine. He recommended this broth for fasting, energy, and overall health. He felt that this combination of zucchini, string beans, celery, and parsley was ideal for restoring acid alkaline and sodium potassium balance in the body. Beeler's broth is said to support the liver, adrenal glands, and pancreas. Beeler's broth is highly recommended for any type of inflammation and for anyone who is under stress. Because Beeler's broth supports the liver, it's a great detoxifier. And because it supports the pancreas, it may help with weight loss. Here is the recipe to make two quarts. The broth will keep in your refrigerator for about three days. You will need one pound of squash, zucchini, yellow, or summer squash, with the ends removed, one pound of string beans with the ends removed, two sticks of celery cut in one inch lengths, two bunches of parsley with the stems removed, and a quart of spring water. Optional ingredients include a tablespoon of whey per cup of soup, a teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil for cup of soup, sea salt, cayenne pepper, ginger, turmeric, or other herbs. Here are the five steps to prepare the broth. One, clean and cut up the vegetables. Two, place a steamer basket in a porcelain or stainless steel pot. Three, fill the bottom of the pot with water up to the bottom of the steamer basket. Four, place the ingredients in the steamer basket and steam till the vegetables become soft, about six to 10 minutes. Five, add optional ingredients. Vegetables may be consumed as a soup with the cooking water or blended into a thick soup with the blender. When blending, I suggest that you start by blending the vegetables and only add the cooking water if needed to achieve the desired consistency. The consistency should be about that of pea soup. Natural solutions. All right, and now we're gonna go right into the acupuncture protocol. Hello, in the next two minutes, I'm gonna share with you a little known secret for quitting smoking. Quitting smoking is not easy. When stopping smoking, some people experience anxiety, difficulty concentrating, dizziness, fatigue, and of course, cravings for that next cigarette. Some people have hunger, and weight gain is common for those who are trying to quit. Sometimes headaches and constipation can add to the troubles of quitting smoking. Well, I have some good news for those who want to quit smoking. Scientific studies have shown that stimulating certain acupuncture points can help people reduce their smoking or even quit smoking completely. Acupuncture works by reducing cravings and improving the sense of taste so that you actually experience the taste of cigarette smoke, which is pretty bad. In this video, I'm gonna show you three acupuncture points to help you reduce smoking or quit completely. Please watch the video all the way to the end because these points work together. I'm also gonna give you my top pick for an herbal formula to support your body while you're making this important change for yourself and your loved ones. My name is Dr. Barrett. I'm a chiropractor, nutritionist, and herbalist. I've helped thousands of people live better naturally, and I want to help you too. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when more videos come out. The first point to help you quit smoking is Lung 1. Lung 1 is known as the Great Letting Go Point signifying that this point stimulates a healthy release of toxins, waste, and nervous system tension. You can think of it as the point that will help you let go of smoking once and for all. Lung one is located in the groove between your shoulder joint and your chest. This one right over here. To locate lung one on your left side, put your finger on the spot that is in the groove between your chest and your shoulder and just below the collarbone. Collarbone is here, and just below is right here. Now find a point that is about the width of one thumb below that, right here. 
Press in to find a spot that is sensitive, sore, tender, or painful. That is lung one. Activate lung one by rubbing it quickly five times. Take a break for a count of five and repeat four more times. It might look like this. Or if you have a Tay Shin, it might look like this. Now, find and activate Lung 1 on your right side. After activating Lung 1, take a few deep breaths. Feel the fresh air coming in and the tension going out. The next point on your road to a nicotine-free life is gallbladder 8. Gallbladder 8 is known as leading valley, showing that this is a powerful step that can lead to a healthier, happier, nicotine-free life. Gallbladder 8 is on your head, a little bit above the tip of your ear. To locate gallbladder 8, find the top of your left ear right here. Now find the spot that is the width of one thumb above that right about here. There'll be a little depression there. Press in to find a spot that is sensitive, sore, tender, or painful. That is gallbladder eight. Activate this point by rubbing it quickly five times. Take a break for a count of five and repeat four more times. It might look like this. Or if you have a Tay Shin, it might look like this. Now find gallbladder eight on your right side and repeat. The third point to help you quit smoking is conception vessel 17. Conception vessel 17 is said to collect, conserve, and increase vital energy. Conception vessel 17 is known as center chest. And in addition to helping you end nicotine cravings, it is used to help with anxiety, heart palpitations, chest pains, asthma, and to soothe breathing difficulties. It's understood that Conception Vessel 17 works by reducing nervous system overload and promoting healthy blood flow. And for those with a newborn, it's been used for insufficient lactation. Conception Vessel 17 is located in the midline of your chest, between your nipples, or where your nipples used to be. Press into this area to find a spot that is sensitive, sore, tender, or painful. That is Conception Vessel 17. Activate Conception Vessel 17 by rubbing the area quickly five times. Take a break for a count of five and repeat four more times. It might look like this. Or if you have a Tay Shin, it might look like this. After stimulating conception vessel 17, you may notice a sensation of heat or energy in your head, chest, or pelvis. This is normal and therapeutic. I greatly admire people who are motivated to take the steps necessary to improve their life and the lives of their loved ones. These acupuncture points can be combined with other smoking cessation programs. If you are motivated to kick the nicotine habit, I suggest that you activate Lung 1, the Great Letting Go Point, Gallbladder 8, Leading Valley, and Conception Vessel 17, Center Chest, twice a day for the next 60 days, and then use them as needed thereafter. I hope that the future brings you a long and happy life. All right, so um, today we reviewed the ancient history of addiction. We covered basic definitions. We looked at the complexity of addiction types and treatments. I revealed to you the one common denominator to all types of addiction, reward. Then we move forward with a basic protocol to help an individual break free from addiction to have a healthier, happier, more productive life. The next step is over to you. That's implementation. What we do in our offices every day. Uh, both me and your standard process reps are here to help you. So, any questions I can answer?
Would you like <clears throat> Would you like me to read them off? Uh, yes, please. please. Uh, okay, we'll start from the top. Do you Do you think um, having a concussion is a risk factor for getting addicted to things, substances, etc.? Uh, I do in more ways than one. Um, because uh, concussion, especially in the first, you know, month or so, leads to altered thinking, and um, can uh, people may become concerned about that, and they may, you know, just start taking drugs and get trapped in the web of addiction. And um, any type of brain injury could could be a predisposing factor for unknown reasons. Great. Um, have you ever used rhodiolin ginseng in addiction? I've used rhodiolin ginseng uh, in fertility programs. I haven't used it in addiction, but I understand it's excellent. Uh, I just want to talk just, just for a minute about rhodiolin ginseng. You know, um, in herbal therapy, uh, so plants develop plant chemicals. This is herbal therapy 101. And they de develop chemicals to fight or to stay alive in their environment. Look, we have an advantage. If, if we don't like something, we can walk away or we can run away, but a plant can't. It has to stay and fight. So plants in the Amazon, that's why they're getting all the antifungal agents out of there because there's fungus all around those plants. Rhodiola grows up high in the mountains and it's in a very uh, forbidding environment. Not a lot of water, a lot of coldness, dryness. And so the plant, becomes very tough and its ability to reproduce has to be rugged. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. So when you consume this plant, uh, you gain some of those adaptive factors. So I think it's a great choice for addiction. That's my answer. It's a lovely answer. <laughs> um, let's see. Using Livco, I think you mentioned it. Yeah. How long do you use it for? Can you use Liviplax or Livton as well as liver support later? Would you use milk thistle right away for the liver? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I would use um, Livco for, for 30 to 60 days. With a, if they have any signs, I would use it for 30 to 60 days right out of the box. Um, after that, I would sort of see what other tools I had and, you know, kind of what the patient was clinically presenting. In terms of other products, it's absolutely great to use them. But again, you have, you can't overwhelm the addicted person's, you know, ability to take them, you know, mental ability to take them, physical ability to swallow them, or, you know, financial ability, because oftentimes they're in serious financial straits. So, but if they can otherwise afford it, you know, great. Great. Um, <clears throat> using Shen Men to calm folks down? Question mark. Shen Men. Oh yeah. Uh, Shen Men Spirit Gate. Um, there is uh, one point uh, that's um, you know uh, Heart Seven, I believe, on the wrist, and also there is a point on the ear. And um, that is the one that I personally select uh, when I'm working with uh, drug addicts. Uh, I, I showed you a basic protocol. You know, obviously there's more. Shenmin is an excellent choice. And anyone knows how to do ear acupuncture, this is a great addition. Good. Uh, well, that was the last one. So I'm just going to tell people if there are any more questions, please put them into the chat box. Everyone. Have a lovely and uh, healthy and safe Thanksgiving. Good night. Good night, and I will put this in. Thank you, Dr. Barrett. That was wonderful. Thanks a lot.